What's going on, my Tapped Out Auto fans? I'm really sorry they haven't been putting out that much content, but we are hitting winter up here. It's crazy we should already hit winter up here. We already ha should have snow. We're still in the low and upper 50s, except for night. It's like 30 degrees at night, so been trying to get stuff winterized, guys. But I wanted to get... I wanted to go look at some garage insulation at Home Depot. And guys, I'm going to tell you, that is insane. Um, I looked and, and uh, I think one sheet of that purple stuff or pink stuff looked purplish to me. But they had the purple and the pink. Um, I think one was $45 a sheet. And the other stuff was around $26 a sheet. So I was thinking, okay, well, how many sheets can I get out of, you know, making a panel of this? Well, the sheets are only eight foot long. This is a nine foot door. So it would take one, two, and then the third piece you would have to use for the end caps. Um, it would be too narrow to uh, put in between here because this is a 14-inch um, side. You might get three panels out of it and then two of the sides. But $30 for one and $45 for the other. I don't know how much the price of that crap is where you guys are at, but that is ridiculous to me. So I'm looking around and stuff like that, and I found And uh, it's kind of... Uh, I don't know, to me and stuff, this Home Depot kind of had it in a spot. Um, now, it doesn't say, I mean, it's got a garage door on here, but it's got the outside of the garage door. See, the shingles and stuff? So, I'm not quite sure what that is. And then it's got, you know, a, a lapping little girl. Okay. Uh, it looks like some type of, I don't know. Packing it says packing material. Okay, that's that's different. And then small installation jobs. And then garage door installation. That's what it said out there. This was eleven bucks for one, two, three, four, five, six sheets, which is basically a full sheet of uh well about a half a sheet of that other stuff and uh a quarter of the price. It's the same thing. If uh, I was looking up, I think it was somewhere in here or it might have been in the store. I was looking at the uh, the rating for this stuff and the other stuff. It was the same. Just uh, the only difference between the pink stuff and this stuff is the pink stuff has got like a um, um, plastic coating that's on it. Uh, this here is pretty much like your, you know, variety uh cooler that you get uh you know at the gas station for a dollar ninety nine. You know, but for this, yeah, as I'm standing here and stuff like that and I'm just kinda wondering how good this stuff works. And as y'all know that there was a window right here that was broke and I can just feel the cold air just hitting me. And uh, after I put this stuff up I can actually stand here comfortably now and not shiver. So the stuff's doing its job. Uh, I guess I guess think it's crazy. We are going to get back on this thing very, very soon, guys. Very soon I'm getting back on this thing. I've just been trying to get called up on getting this place winterized. Um, I still got to go all the way around and fill in these uh, square holes here where they had the lights and get that done. Um, did do a little welding on the car. Got that, uh, that little... I have no idea. And there's another one over there in the same damn spot. Everybody tells me that these cars didn't come with pinholes. Well, guys, I've been all over this car. As y'all see, I've been hitting everything with the uh, um, uh, wire brush on the drill. And this car has no rust anywhere. Underneath it is solid, guys. And literally, there is the exact same pinhole over there. Just in a different spot. Same, same, same. About the same spot, actually. See if we can see it over here. So, I don't know what these pinholes are for. They're perfectly round. 
This carpet's never been out of this car, I can tell, because boy, was it a pain in the ass to get out. So there's that one right there. And the other one is right here. Right here where this little paint circle is. Right there. I have not a clue why General Motors would have, and it is, it, it's factory, guys. I mean, it is no rust underneath this car at all. We have several videos underneath this car and have no idea at all um, why there is two perfectly round pinholes and there's no rust on this car. Some surface rust, but no rust rust. Um, so, yeah, that's just super weird to me. But we've got to, got to get on this car pretty soon, guys. I'm tired of seeing her tore up. Um, the only reason why I tore her, you know, took her apart like this is to find the build sheet. I was determined to find the build sheet. Everybody and their grandma was giving me, you know, oh, it's underneath this and it's all underneath that. No, it was underneath the carpet on the tunnel uh, ramp, um, cowl. We already seen that. Y'all haven't seen it. I show y'all. And this is a thing. Since I've been doing research on this, there is a lot. Well, I'm going to say within five people. That tells me that's where the build that they found their build sheet was underneath the carpet on the driver's side. There it is. I need a. I got some a laminate over there. I'm gonna a laminate really good because you can still read it. It's upside down and backwards, but you can still read it. Um, over here on this side, upside down. Um, I got pictures and stuff like that. They're kind of. I need to get a better camera. But uh, it says specialty options. And uh, I've talked to a couple people and they're telling me that uh, that they've never seen a build sheet like that. Um, these people got an 88 IROC and uh, their build sheet's on the same way. It's just kind of like down in here a little bit more and then up and then the seatbelt hole got more of theirs than it does mine. But their build sheet looks completely different than mine. I don't know why it's different, but it's most definitely different. So I'm guessing in 88, they must have changed it. Boy, that is just insane. Guys, when I walk by here, I get to get a shiver. And I mean, you put your hand right here. And I mean, it's just, it's awesome. So I got to get that, but uh, I can't find my other old duct tape. <laughs> but we are getting this place, guys. All these parts up here go on the car. Once all this stuff is back on the car, all these shells are cleared and everything. Um, I do want to get up there in this attic again and start and check stuff out. I think I'm going to do that tomorrow. But yeah, I can't find my uh, other roll of brand new duct tape. have uh, absolutely no idea where it is. And if I can't find it, then I'm going to be pretty much at a standstill because I can't go no further without it. Did put a uh, headliner. In here, um, I did take some pictures of it on my uh, shorts and stuff like that, but uh, um, it was kind of a nervous deal. And I mean, it's not perfect, but it's most definitely better than nothing. Um, I do not have the $400 to buy a brand new one. And no, there is no upholstery shops around me. The closest one that does that will deal into this is uh all the way in um i think big rapids that will tackle this guys you know how much they wanted up here to cover that at every upholstery shop that i got a hold of downstate i couldn't get a hold of none up here that would want to touch that headliner for some reason every single person told me 500 dollars to recover that 500 bucks it took me $10 and an old bed sheet. That's an old bed sheet we got at uh, the Engine Buckley show up here like two, three years ago. And uh, as you can see, it's kind of, you know, fraying and stuff like that. But hey, it's better than nothing. Um, also, I have enough bed sheet. We're going to uh, do the speaker box also because that looks like shit. Uh <laughs> But, uh, man, I guess kind of stinks. I've been walking around here for about 20 minutes looking for my um, duct tape, and I can't find it. And look what I found. I found this in my driveway a couple days ago. I don't know if it fell out of one of them boxes 
It doesn't work. I need to put batteries in it to see if it works. But I found it, and I had it over here, and I had it over there, and then now it's up here. But I need to put some batteries in that thing and see if it works. Good old snap-on. That probably cost somebody 120 bucks. I don't know what that is. If y'all know what that is, let me know. Some type of a flash or something or a brighter light. I'm going to take that in the house see if I can't find some batteries. And I might do that tomorrow. Comment down below and tell me, what is that, just a brighter light? I don't think I have batteries. These things usually take, what, three or four uh, triple, C, triple A's? Let's see. Oh, look at there. It just spins right off. One, two, three. Three energizers. Well, it's not all corroded out. Cool. I'll see if I got some batteries and see if that thing works. Uh, but yeah, we're getting closer, guys. Ah, but yeah. I'm really glad I did this and stuff like that, even though it has been a long process to put the thing back together, but I have all winter. And literally, guys, that carpet... Even though there wasn't really no mouse crap in this car. I looked all up underneath the dash. There was no signs of mouse in there. The only sign that we had of mouse was back here by, underneath the uh, passenger seat. There was a mouse nest. Other than that, I've uh, been to all through this car, guys, and nothing. And man, am I surprised how much warmer it stays in this garage. I haven't turned on that heater in an hour, and I'm in here in a t-shirt, and it's like 27 degrees outside. This is just great. I'm just liking this, making the car all comfy, nothing's frozen, but yeah, all this stuff here, guys, goes back into the car, um, so yeah, I cannot wait to get that, get that done, but I want to get the garage done first, and, uh, after that, then, uh, I need to jack this car up to the moon. I just want to make sure and stuff like that that I think about it and stuff because once it's jacked up, it's going to be in this, this spot that it's jacked up on all winter long. So I just need to make sure that uh, I need to make sure and stuff like that where I want it, where it's going to stay. And I actually been walking around it. You know, that's what you want to do, guys. You don't want to, if you have a garage, even this big or any garage, even the garage that we just came from, guys, you know, um, you want to park the car in here like this, and you want to be, you know, you want to walk around it a little bit. You know, like this side right here, the only thing we got to do is get this glue stuff off and then the IROC off the side of it. Uh, one day, I hope I could afford to buy the IROC uh, kit, and hopefully, probably not around here, but uh, hopefully find some place and stuff like that that can put them on that uh, won't put them on crooked. Um... But yeah, see, I can walk around here. This table here, as we know, folds down. So if I need it to fold down, I can fold down and I have all this room. Um, don't need to do nothing to this side and stuff like that. So I can walk around. Do need to do some work down here from when we come in and out of that hole when we lived on 18 Road. It kind of uh, boogered up some bolt holes, as you see right there. Need to fix that. And the rear bumper, I'm hoping... Like hell, guys. And I didn't realize how driving in up and down out of that hole over there on 18 Road, I didn't really know how badly we was hitting the bottom of this car. But uh, we got some work to do to the rear bumper of this car. And I really need to fix it because this car here, unlike the other, I don't know, six to ten Camaros I've torn down in my life, guys, this thing has VIN numbers on everything. Front, rear bumper, fenders, everything. The only thing in this car, the matching VIN number does not have is this fender, which um, came off same time period of a Camaro, this door, and that little piece of quarter panel right there is the only three things that does not have the uh, VIN numbered because as y'all know, this car was wrecked and those three pieces were unfixable. But not... A one of these parts is aftermarket. The door and the front uh, fender here came off of an 88 uh, IROC. And uh, that corner piece right there, which I wished I'd known, um, it came off of an 82. 
that the, uh, if y'all seen in my previous videos, that the quarter panel was came with the car. I just had to cut it up and stick it on there. And the only difference I could see is I need to do some work on where the um, spoiler goes because the factory spoiler hung down way too low. And I just kind of threw this hole in here, just kind of, you know, make it look decent. And uh, it's still off. So we got to do some filling and some work there. Um, but other than that, this is great. It's all straight. The front end is all straight. I need to find my damn, I can't find my, um, uh, hood latch. Uh, I don't know where the hell I did with my hood latch. I got it somewhere, but, uh, I wasn't going to put a hood on this car, but it really does need a hood on this car. A lot of people keep asking me, why don't you, uh, just leave it? Guys, like I've said before, that k and air filter right there, no kidding. We've looked it up before. That thing costs damn near as much money as that carburetor. Pretty close. This here was like $450 I looked it up for this air cleaner. I have no idea why somebody would spend that much, but that's what they're going for. $450, I think. Now, we're going to do it again because I know y'all guys get on here and stuff like that. Badger the hell out of me if I get it wrong. So, let's, let's, let's look again. Because I want to show, because the last time and stuff like that, I had a guy just, oh, those things ain't cost that much. I can get one for, well, I tell you what, get me some for 20 bucks. K&N Flame Air Filter. Let's see here. All right, guys, there it is. That's my air cleaner right there, the exact same one. 420 God. Four hundred and twenty nine dollars and ninety nine cents. That's not counting the shipping, that's not counting tax, that's not counting anything. So you're talking about damn near a five hundred dollar air cleaner. Right there. That's insane. And that's the way they are. I mean you can get a junk one in here, but look at the junk ones. Even the junk ones is three hundred and forty three ninety nine. Jeez. I mean that's a lot of money. A lot of money. And I don't even see any used ones in here. Let's see if there's any used ones real quick. Someone here on eBay. This one here's got a face on it. It's not K and M, but look at it, used three hundred and twenty nine dollars and ninety nine cents. It's not. It's got a K and N filter, but the the casing's not K and N. That's insane. That's a cheap one right there, forty five dollars. But I don't see. I don't see any for sale. That's just like mine. So yeah, guys, that's, uh, I still can't find my damn duct tape. So yeah, guys, that's one reason. So yeah, I mean, you're looking at, uh, let's just say $500 for that. Carburetor was, I think, what, $650? So just them two right there is $1,100. Let's just say them two there, $1,100 brand new. That's not counting the intake, nothing. Just them two. So, yeah, we need a, most definitely a hood on it. And I know a lot of y'all people are kind of snickered about the hood, but guys, I do not want this car to look like any other Camaros. Um, we drove by a car show one day, and there was some Camaros sitting out front. And uh, every single one of them had a six-inch cow hood. Every damn one of them had a six-inch cow hood. And this is what's funny. And half them cars had LSs in them or fuel injected. What's the point? What, well, just so it look cool? So, yeah. But, uh, we're going to get to it, guys. All right, well, I'm going to get over here just giving y'all a little shop update. We are getting a lot of room. I mean, it's getting there, guys. It's getting there. Slow process and stuff like that. A lot of things are going on in the life and everything. And, um... Uh, also, don't buy a portal cable. Portal cable is the most junkiest 
power tools ever. Shame on you, Tractor Supply. I'm not even kidding. This thing right here, not even a year old, the damn trigger sticks for no damn reason. I got to take this thing all apart and find out why the trigger sticks, not even a year old. Um, that's actually the third one I've had. I have a brand new Zaw saw right there, port of cable, brand new $150 Zaw saw, junk, because the little locking thing up here, you gotta see I had tape on it to try to uh, keep the blade in, because when I, uh, when this happened, I had to do, a, I had to get a job done, and it just wouldn't work, so I had to, uh, I had to go get, you know, Makita. Um, but yeah, I think this thing was like 130 or something like that, 150 bucks, something like that. And within a couple of weeks, within a couple of weeks, guys, that thing broke and they wouldn't take it back. And I hadn't even had the receipt. And, uh, well, yeah, I think it was a couple of months and they told me, oh, the thing only has a 30 day warranty. Um, I can't take it back. Yeah. Um, uh, this really ticks me off because we need this to work on the car so yeah uh port the cable if you're watching this your stuff has gotten to be garbage i mean it's pretty bad when this old ancient skill right here outworks your tools um one of these days and stuff like that if i get the money and stuff i want to get either a makita or a milwaukee um grinder but, uh, yeah, that, that just ticks me off. But, uh, well, let's see. Let's just see if it. Now, remind, now, I'm telling you guys, this thing here is like two years old. Like, literally, I bought a brand new tractor supply about two years ago. Yep. See that? Yep. Good job, port of cable. All right. Well, thanks for watching. Share, like, and subscribe. And we're getting closer, guys. We are getting closer. All right. Later.